From the stars came the will to shape fate, hurling this world toward ruin. is mine to bear. To offer guidance where it is most needed. To demand sacrifice. Very few trailers take my breath away, but that was absolutely amazing. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video and a very special one at that as we've finally seen the reveal of Grand Cafe. Not only is this extremely important as they are one of the playable factions in Warhammer 3 at launch, but also for those tabletop fans such as myself who have been dreaming to see Cafe realized in one way, shape or form. I must admit that that was absolutely special and like I've been watching this trailer constantly since I had early access to it because I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check over the trailer, watch over it and stop a little bit by bit and do a bit of a lore analysis as we do with any trailer that gets released. This should be fairly exciting so let's just jump right in. Okay, so we can stop at the very beginning. This is Miao Ying. Apologies for any butchered pronunciations as per usual, but let's move on. This is one of two new legendary lords which will be playable for Grand Imperial Cafe. A completely new character which has never been seen before. In fact, she and her brother are both completely new to the lore. Her brother's name is Zhao Ming and both of them look pretty cool, though Zhao Ming looks a bit evil, does he not? I'm not too sure if that's just something there or it's just a design, but they look interesting and we will go about this when we start discussing the blog. So already we're introduced to one legendary lord, which is quite interesting and she seems to be the main focus of the whole trailer. From the stars came the will to shape fate, 
We're going to be stopping a lot, as you can imagine, as now we have a view of what I imagine to be a part of the Great Bastion, as it looks to be a complete war zone, and obviously we can see the lingering influence of Zinch getting closer and closer. This area, whether it's part of the Great Bastion or a fortress attached to the Great Bastion, seems to be heavily on the fire. I mean, we can see it very obvious here, and there seems to be an encroaching doom. This is obviously representing the fact that chaos is getting stronger. We saw this with the Kislev versus Korn roster reveal where Korn was obviously being very aggressive and now Zinch is attacking Cafe which actually falls to the law quite well so this is actually quite good. The visuals themselves are absolutely stunning. I mean you can tell that this is supposed to be some grand fortress attached to the Great Bastion. I mean if I'm wrong I'm going to be eating my own hat because just look at this. You can see fortifications on all sides. This is really really cool. Hurling this world toward ruin. Okay, I think that we've gotten our first look at a siege map, because this looks like a siege map. Look outside there on the right hand side, you can clearly see just the usual type of fields that you normally see outside of a siege battle, and you can see loads of walls, you can see multi-layers, you can see bridges going over those layers too, this is... This is special. This is really special. I mean, I know that we did have a very similar thing with Warhammer 1, where they did something with the dwarfs that showed off multi-layers and so on, and then we didn't get that, but we do know a Siege rework is coming, and if this is going to be what's part of the Siege rework, well, damn, like, this is absolutely impressive. I'm really hoping this is the case. Big cities, big fortresses, this will be absolutely immense. If we're going to have little bridge platforms like that, being able to have our ranged units firing down on enemies, that's going to be absolutely cool. We don't really get too much of a view of the city, but it looks absolutely massive. Okay, so originally when I first saw this, I thought this was going to be a sort of mortar unit, though we later on see it in action, and it's actually more of a firework launcher, very similar to that of the rocket battery, which did exist in lore, by the way, and was mentioned very, very early on in the additions. The Imperials naturally took influence of such a destructive mechanism and then decided to invent the Hellstorm rocket battery. If it will act in a very same way, we don't know. We've seen it fire but in later on the trailer you just see it firing directly on a target, so you don't see it at its full capacity, I'm imagining? Okay, so I must admit, this is what made me really excited when I first saw the trailer. The fact is that this is a terracotta construct, something that was mentioned in 8th edition, I don't believe it was mentioned any earlier, but we've never really seen a representation of it in any way, shape, or form as far as my recollection goes. And you can tell that it's absolutely massive, not just because of the rest of the trailer, but even just looking at this peasant warrior, looking up at this massive dude, I mean, wow, that is visually impressive, and if you know that these are basically mechanical constructs, you would feel a lot safer having them around your town, wouldn't you? Well, if you're Cafean at least. Okay, so here we can see three different types of units and a possible lord or hero choice. In the very far left hand side we can see what I'm imagining to be low tier infantry with spears. These could very much be tier 1 or tier 0 units as they kind of look like it but we don't get a really good look at them. Now with regards to the other two units we've got halberdiers, one with shield, one without, both of them decently armoured so these might be tier 2 and tier 3 units? I mean, the most important thing is they look freaking cool. I believe that the ones in the middle would probably be the ones that are the more higher tier, mainly just because of the way they're dressed. They seem to have some very intricate markings when it comes to their armor, whereas the ones in the right look more like a frontline unit. I'm assuming that the lone character is a lord or hero choice as they're really showing him off there, and he looks pretty cool. He would possibly be a hero? I don't know. It just kind of looks with the armor. He's wearing kind of light armor maybe he could be a lord i mean they still look awesome i've got no complaints whatsoever the visuals themselves are cool and that's the most important thing 
Don't worry, we'll be talking about the flying creatures in just a second, but we're going to talk about these two characters in the right. So, we have noticed that the one in the very far right has a glowing hand. Obviously, this means that he is a sorcerer of some type, possibly a lord or a hero choice. And the one at the left, nothing is really shown, but he could be the lord or hero variant, as in comparison to the gentleman that we saw marching with the other forces. It just kind of makes sense to me at the very least, as they're showing off a unique design here. burden is mine to bear. To offer guidance where it is most needed. Can we just stop for a second and appreciate these visuals? I know I've skipped some units, but we're getting a better shot of them soon. It's just, I'm looking at this trailer constantly now, and it's absolutely stunning visuals. I really hope that this stuff does make it to Warhammer 3, or else I'm going to be incredibly disappointed. Because just look at this, it's just stunning. To demand sacrifice. Okay, so we don't get a really good look at these units regardless, and I'm not too sure exactly what they are. My thought was that they were the Kirin, but they weren't winged horses. They were able to fly, however, so they've probably been redesigned to be more like a Pegasus. It kind of does make sense, but we're going to have to wait and see until we can get some proper artwork to show them off better. <laughs> Going back to what I mentioned very early on in the video, so these are the batteries and we can see them shooting out what looks to be a single shot. I'm hoping that they'll have a multi-shot function very similar to that of like say for example bolt throwers and stuff like that where you could have a single missile which is obviously very accurate and then obviously a explosive kind of just scatter shot type of round which would be really cool to use which obviously is the inspiration for the Hellstorm rocket battery. We're going to have to wait and see but I don't know, it kind of looks like it. Here's hoping that we'll get more clarification once they eventually do a complete roster reveal because I honestly don't think that we're seeing the full roster here. It's something that they don't tend to do with these trailers. Okay, so this is very important as we're looking towards the Zinchian roster right now as, yes, yeah, surprise, surprise, Cafe was going to be fighting Zinch. But these are... Chaos Chosen, I think, riding atop of Discus of Zinch. There's quite a few of them actually being shown off, and that's really different, as this was never really a unit in the tabletop or in lore. In fact, the Discus of Zinch were normally used by some mortals, yes, but always a high-ranking commander or high-ranking sorcerer, never for baseline units. Though this is really curious, as this adds a lot of mobility for that of Zinch's army, and will allow for heavy ground units, well, heavy flying units, to knock into the enemy line. Okay, so stopping once again, we can see Screamers of Zinch all over the place, and well, that was to be expected because it's one of like the core units for Zinch himself. But what I really want to talk about here is, of course, this flying balloon, which is rather interesting. I don't think there's been any mention of something like that in the lore. It looks like to be able to do a lot of damage. We know that it's got like a bit of a cannon at the front, and the crew can also fire too. Hopefully that means that they'll have two different types of ammunition in games, so firing with the crew doesn't waste the ammunition of the main gun. I'm not too sure if that's something that can happen, but then again, Creative Assembly have surprised us in the past. But it looks really cool, and I'm not sure if this will be a single entity or not. It'll be really interesting to see how they play. Hopefully they're not fragile. It's just one of those things where you're looking at a balloon and you're thinking, yeah, this can easily just get cut and fall and die. But we'll have to wait and see how they actually play. Of course, this is still Warhammer after all, so it'll be able to have a decent amount of a health pool, I'm imagining. It should be a single entity in my opinion, but it might come in a small group. <laughs> Kairos Fate Weaver and yeah, Chaos Furies of Zinch, but we were expecting them. But let's talk about Kairos Fate Weaver, one of the most powerful Lords of Change in Zinch's army. And well, we were already expecting him after we saw Scarbrand, it just kind of made sense. But this is a character which is immensely powerful using magic and loads of different laws of magic at that. In fact, on the tabletop, each head had access to different laws of magic. It was a really special rule 
and I hope that gets implemented, or at least somehow gets implemented in Total War Warhammer. I'm not going to jump into the speculation train, but I am really excited to see this character, and I honestly can't wait to play as him, as he's actually one of my favorite minis. If memory serves, I have all different iterations of Kairos Fate Weaver built and painted. Yeah, I know, that's surprising. <laughs> Alright, so not the best cut, but we can see a few interesting things over here. Mainly, of course, we do have the blue horror, the pink horror. The blue horror looks like this angry jelly baby and it's absolutely adorable. Sorry, I'm getting off topic here. And some Forsaken, some Zinchian Forsakens, which will obviously add some heavy duty infantry to the Zinchian roster. As we know, it's very heavily focused on magic and stuff like that. So some frontline big hitters is going to be very, very good for the faction. Here's hoping that we see a lot more as time progresses, as we haven't really seen a lot just yet. Sentinel of the Great Bastion! So it looks like we have some Grenadier units on foot, which is quite hard hitting as far as we've seen, though that could be for cinematic effect. It's pretty impressive to be honest, and it looks like that will do a lot of damage. I'm assuming that's also going to be anti-armor and so on. So yeah, like I wonder what, they'll be tier 2, tier 3? They are clearly a decent unit if they're going to be using such heavy firepower. And it's rather interesting because obviously it's not a musket. It's a firework I'm imagining, which fits really well with the theme of Cafe. It's nice to see that a lot of old lore aspects remain the same. It might not be so important to people who aren't used to the universe or have only been interested into it because of Total War Warhammer. But those old guard like myself who've been playing for like decades, yeah, this old stuff is important to keep seeing coming back. So we have our first look at proper Cafean magic. This should be fairly interesting as of course we know that they had celestial magic. This was of course way back in tabletop lore which was their own version of the law of heavens and it had all these different things. We don't know exactly what this actually is just yet and that's what makes me very very curious. There's like no information whatsoever and it looks cool. I like the spell. I think it looks cool. If it's going to have those visuals on the battlefield that's going to be absolutely impressive. <laughs> Okay, I'll be very, very honest with you. The first time I saw this trailer and I saw the legendary Lord transform into a dragon, I just completely lost it. It was something which obviously we all expected. Cafe and royalty has always been linked to dragons and it's always been said that they can transform into dragons or that they're dragons transforming into people. This is now further explained with something and I'm going to be covering that very soon. So we are just seeing our expectations. It's honestly, this was just mind-blowing to me. I hope this is the case that we're going to see a proper transformation mechanic in Total War Warhammer 3, as it can just bring so much potential. Like, I tell you what, this is an absolute tremendous scene, and it deserves a lot of attention. Well done to everyone who worked on this, because damn, it was just so cool. 
So we've been able to learn quite a decent amount of things with regards to this and we're not done today. There's going to be more videos. We're obviously going to cover the blog as that's going to be dedicated to its own video as it's going to be quite lengthy too. So there's a lot to discuss and I'm pretty sure that you're not going to be hearing the last of me today. So this is going to be quite cool. What do you guys think about Cafe so far? I mean, that was an incredible reveal. Absolutely amazing. And damn, like... Damn. I'll let the trailer play off so you can play it once again if you want to see it again, but we've got a lot to talk about and it's not going to be too long until the next video drops. I'm honestly really excited for Cafe. I must admit at the very beginning I wasn't because it's a new faction and there had to be a lot of work. I was kind of skeptical. That's kind of been gone now with this visual. I'm honestly, I'm eating my own words, I must admit it. I was wrong to not be hyped up about Cafe. From the stars came the will to shape fate, hurling this world toward ruin. is mine to bear. To offer guidance where it is most needed. To demand sacrifice. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. 
A big thank you to our patrons. Your support means the world to us. It's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince, and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level. You guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman, and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level. Honestly, we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing, and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel's been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.